It is a cold and gray December day here in Berlin and I figured this was the perfect opportunity to shoot a video that I've been meaning to make for a long time about how to make a magazine. Now, if you don't know me, I've been publishing this travel photography magazine called Travel Vibes for the past three years. And right now issue three is almost finished. So I figured this was the perfect time to take you guys along the way and show you our process of how we make this magazine. So this is how I make a magazine. Basically, I separate it in three major steps. Um, first of all, you're gonna have to find a concept for the magazine. In this step, you kind of figure out what you even wanna do and what your magazine is supposed to be about. Then the second step, you design and print the magazine. So this is like the very hands-on part where you actually make the magazine. And then once you're finished making the magazine, of course, you also need to publish it and you need to figure out how to distribute it. But let's start at the beginning. Before you even decide if you want to make a magazine or not, you need to find a good concept. So you need to figure out what kind of topic your magazine is supposed to be about, what kind of story you want to tell in your magazine, and of course, you're going to need good content. Now, if you're a photographer, that last part is going to be pretty easy because you already have the photos that you want to showcase, but you can still make a really bad magazine even if you have really good photos, just because you don't curate it the right way. So that's the story part. But let's start at the first step of finding a good topic. Now, you're probably already going to have some sort of idea of what you want to make the magazine about. So I'm guessing this step is going to be the easiest for you. It can be anything from fashion to analog photography, or maybe you want to make a magazine about cool stores from your neighborhood. I think something like that could be really interesting. Um, with Travel Vibes, I guess it's pretty obvious the topic of this magazine is travel photography. So we had like a really good general frame of that we could work within. Once you found a good topic, finding a story is actually going to be a lot harder. I'm going to be honest with you, the first issue of Travelers magazine, we didn't have a story at all. We had some really cool contributors in here with some really, really cool photos, but the magazine as a whole just didn't tell a consistent story. So how can you make a good story? When making a magazine, you don't need to come up with a complex story like for a book or a movie, for example. But instead, it's just really important to be conscious about how you arrange your content. If you look at the typical story arc of a movie, it's gonna look something like this. It's gonna have an introduction, it's gonna have a climate around the middle, and then a resolution towards the end. Now to translate this into a magazine, you're gonna to want to balance out the content that you have throughout the magazine and put you know, the strongest and the most exciting content somewhere around the middle, kind of like a climax of a movie. We do this with Travel Vibes uh, by giving an intro and an outro towards the beginning and the end of the magazine to kind of set a general frame for the story that we want to tell with the magazine and then arrange the content in a way that feels natural and just feels authentic. The third part of collecting the content kind of goes alongside the story part because obviously you can't tell a story about things that you don't have content about. Um, but yeah, in this step, you need to kind of gather all the things that you want to put in the magazine. You need to collect the photos, you need to conduct interviews perhaps, and I highly recommend that you don't do this all on yourself, but find some collaborators to make the magazine with. You know, maybe you find a writer that has a cool, cool piece to share, or you find another photographer, if you're a photographer, to showcase their work as well. And it just makes the whole process a lot easier. Um, but yeah, my best advice for you is to stay organized, because if you make a 100-page magazine, you're going to have a lot of random text photos that can be all over the place if you don't have a good order from the start. All right, now that you got all your content ready, we can start to actually design the magazine. But first, you need to think about printing. I put these two together because they kind of go hand in hand with each other, because whichever print shop you pick is gonna have an influence on what kind of designs are possible in the first place. For example, when we did Travel Vibes, the first issue, um, the layout is wider than A4, but it's not as high as A4. So a lot of print shops just didn't want to print it in the first place. And I found one that did it, but it took a lot of work. So I highly recommend 
that you pick a print shop before you even start designing. The print shops are also going to be able to tell you a lot of important details like what margins you should use and how thick uh, your bezel is going to be for the magazine. Just things like that that you need to know before you start designing. Then let's get to the design. I don't want to give you a full InDesign tutorial because there's so many good tutorials out there but I just want to give you a general overview of what's important. There's many desktop publishing softwares out there. I'd say the most popular one is probably Adobe InDesign just due to the popularity of InDesign. But there's also good alternatives. For example, Affinity Publisher. Um, that's the software I used for making the third issue of Travel Vibes, whereas the first two I made in InDesign. And I would say that InDesign is more advanced and it offers more detailed features. But in another way, that makes Affinity Publisher much easier to use because it just feels more streamlined. And sure, you don't have the craziest options, but for what I did, it was actually enough. So. I can't really give you a recommendation, it's a matter of taste, I would say. I have used both, I like using both. Um, I definitely noticed the limitations in Publisher, but I also really enjoyed making the entire magazine in it, just because it was more streamlined, at least to my workflow. And for actually making the design, I would say Pinterest is your friend. There's so much inspiration out there, you know? Go to a magazine store, just flip through some magazine, buy some magazines yourself, and just use that as an inspiration for the design. Don't be scared of getting creative. Don't be scared of like trying odd layouts. I personally am someone that likes things to be super organized, but at the same time that will make a magazine really boring. So I would say our third issue is a really good middle ground between like being clean and organized, but also playing with the designs at times. Um, I think it's really important that you just like put some creative spirit into making a magazine and not just, not just have a newspaper where everything follows the perfect grid lines all the time. But of course, the design itself is your thing to figure out. Um, put your own creative style to it, put your own passion into it. If you know about like InDesign and stuff like that, you're gonna have an easy time. But even if you don't, it doesn't take long to figure out and to do like really cool things. One thing I forgot to mention is paper. There's so many different kinds of paper, but it basically comes down to three categories, which is matte paper, glossy paper, and then kind of semi-gloss paper. Um, for our second issue, we went with like a semi-gloss finish because I think it did like a really good job at representing the color in the photos and just making the photos look clean while still making it like feel kind of nice. But of course, this is an entirely subjective choice. So you're gonna have to, you know, maybe try out different kinds of paper and see how your, uh, how you, and see how your work looks on this paper and how it feels and how you like it. And then the second thing that you need to figure out with paper is the thickness. Um, at least in Europe, I don't know about the States, the thickness of paper is presented in grams per square meter. So the content of our magazine is 135 grams per square meter, which I would say is a very nice thickness because it makes it still easy to read while being thick enough to feel like a quality piece of paper. But at the same time, you could totally pick something thicker if you want a more like artistic feel or you could also pick something thinner if you have a lot of pages and you just want to keep the magazine slim. And then our cover I think is around 250 grams per square meter which I think is a really nice thickness because once again it makes it easy to read but still feels like quality but you could totally pick something thicker you know you could probably go to up to a thickness where it feels almost like a hardcover. But yeah but these are two things you also need to watch out for when printing and then once this is completed, once you have exported your files, you're ready to send it off to the print shop and wait for your magazines. Something really exciting just came in the mail. All right. This is by far my favorite part about making a magazine, when you hold that first copy in your hand. But unfortunately our work isn't done at this point yet, because you still need to figure out how to publish and distribute your magazine. Now this is one thing that's going to be harder when you self-publish a magazine as opposed to working with an established publisher, because they already have all the connections, they already know what to do. But if you self-publish, you're gonna have to figure it out on your own. And basically you're going to need some sort of marketing strategy. Now I'm not a huge online marketing guru, so I can't give you the perfect answer to this, but I just want to give you some inspiration on the options that you have. 
Now for distribution, you basically have two options. Either you go online or you do it the traditional way through stores. Online, there's a bunch of options. Um, I think the most typical one would be to sell it through your own website or to use an art store or you know another website that sells art. And then you can also try to distribute your magazine digitally uh, through services like these. Um, but then I think the traditional way is much more interesting trying to go to stores and actually present your magazine. And I think how successful you can be with this highly depends on where you are, because in Berlin at least, the market for making creative magazines is really saturated. And if you go to a cafe and show them your magazine, they most likely won't give a shit about it. But if you are in a smaller place that appreciates like this, the single creative work more, then I would say go to magazine stores and present them your magazine, go to cafes and present them your magazine and you know, maybe you find other little shops that might be interested in selling your magazine for you. And now once you figure out your distribution, it's time to think about promoting the magazine. Like I said, I'm not gonna give you a huge marketing strategy, but just like a general idea. I think that it's really important that you try to tell a story around the magazine and try to make up a story about what this magazine represents and what it stands for and also lift out what makes it unique and what makes it special. And then once you have your story, think about what kind of people would be interested in this kind of story. And then those are your potential customers. And as a next step, you just need to figure out where you can reach those customers. Now this could, for example, be Instagram, if you have a very Instagram heavy magazine, but it could also be something totally different. Maybe you make a magazine that's very art focused, then try to approach museums or galleries if they wanna showcase your magazine. Or if it's about cooking or baking, then try to reach out to cooking shops or baking shops. Maybe they want to represent your magazine. And this is all just meant as a food, food of thought for you. So you just need to sit down and think about who would want your magazine and think about what kind of story you want to tell with your magazine. And then get the story out there. Leverage the following if you have one. Leverage your friends. You know. If you have and the corona crisis is over, maybe throw a little party for the magazine and just try to get enough people interested in it and try to get people to talk about it. Yeah, that's the, the basic idea, to make as much noise as you can so the most people are possible hear about your magazine and you know also the most potential customers will hear about it. And there you have it. Now, if you followed the three simple steps I just presented to the letter, you will now also hold a magazine in your hands. I'm kidding, of course. Making a magazine is a really long and tedious process and there's many factors that are beyond your control, like printing errors or people not sending the stuff to you that they promised. But it's also really, really rewarding and I highly recommend if you do think about making a magazine yourself, then do it, you know. Uh, if you end up making something, please reach out to me. I would love to see what you made and yeah, I really hope that this video was helpful for you to understand like the general process of self-publishing a magazine. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.